What's up guys, it's your boy. Welcome to the channel. On this channel, we talk about hot shot, core hauling, how to be successful, and how to make it work. You're also gonna get tips and tricks on hot shot car hauling and hot shot trucking. But, most of all, you will not get the small mindedness of people around the world. So if that's something you're interested in, like, share, subscribe, hit that ding ding. Now let's roll on into the video. What's up, what's up guys? It's your boy coming back with another video. This one's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna talk across the hood, but we're gonna go way, way, way back. We're going back to the basics. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm not sure, but I think I'm gonna do a series on getting into hot shot. I mean, from the beginning to rocking out, making money, making your own decisions, stacking cash, complaining about the business. Oh, you gotta put that in there, right? So, let's start with, with the first steps. So, you're at your nine to five, you've had enough. Uh, you're doing something, most likely, you're doing something and you see pickup trucks going down the road with trailers. You have no idea what you're doing, what they're doing. You say, oh, that looks cool. You just gotta buy a truck and a trailer and that's it. You say, I'm gonna do that. Bert, you missed a step. Pump the brakes, Smokey. You need to do some soul searching. Do some searching deep down. Do some thinking. One, what kind of person are you? Are you an introvert? Can you be alone for weeks, days at a time? Can you be in this truck by yourself? Just you. You, yourself, and you. Or do you need a dog? Do you need to bring your wife with you? Are you holding someone else hostage for your dreams and your goals? If you're answering, I want to take my wife, you shouldn't. You shouldn't ask your wife. You should not put your wife or anybody in that situation. Because, just hear me out on why, your wife may think it's cool, may think it sounds like a great idea. Oh, I'm going to be with the love of my life, we're going to travel the country, we're going to see the country, and the life's going to be great. Everybody's going to be happy. So that's what you start to do, right? You start to get the truck, you start to get the trailer, you get all this stuff. And now you are sold on your wife doing this with you. You may or may not be willing to do it. So as I was saying, your wife would agree to it because it sounds great. It sounds like a vacation. Like we can make life sound so great when we don't know what we're really doing. And then you're going to get on the road. You're going to be running with your wife in the passenger seat. You're with her 24-7. You may get lucky and she may love it. She may enjoy the work. Or she may hate life. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do if your wife can't stand trucking? And you've decided that you're not going to do it without her. For one reason or another, whether it's 
you can't stand the fact of being away from her. You don't trust her. You just, you can't be alone. Your personality doesn't warrant that. Like, just plenty of plenty of reasons. So, think about it. Make sure your personality can handle that. Number two. More thought, more thinking. Can you live in a truck? Or do you need to budget $10,000 a year for a hotel? 10 G's a year for a hotel. Think of that. Can you budget that? Would that make sense to you? Or are you going to be home every night? There are some guys that can make it home every night. Very few, but some. And at what cost are you willing to be home every night? What are you willing to give up? A lot of money? A lot of potential? A lot of progress in your business? Here's why I say that. So you want to be a local driver. You're going to run all local. But in the back of your mind, you're going to build a fleet, right? So you're going to ask a driver to do what you won't do. How are you going to appreciate that driver? How are you going to appreciate that line of work when you yourself are not willing to do it? You're not willing to sleep in a pickup truck. You're not willing to be gone all week. How can you pay him correctly? How can you understand his struggles? How can you understand when he says, I'm ready to go home? And you say, well, I can't find you loads home. Me? If I'm working for you, and I'm ready to go home, and you don't send me home, I'll tell you, fly a kite. And there's a lot of guys like that. When you're out here, when you're done, you're done. And resetting in a hotel does not reset your mind. Does not physically clear your mind. It just does not. Like, you're not going to be okay with that. You need to go home. You need to wind down with the family. You need to get out of work mode. Like, I don't care what you do, where you go. If you're on the road, you're working. Your mind is in work mode. You may be in a hotel. You're still in work mode because you can't do what you want when you want. Well, sure you can. No, you can't. You can't just take a week off in a hotel. It, it won't make sense to you. It does not make business sense. Okay, so now, what kind of um, mindset do you have? I, I see people on YouTube that says, no vacation pay, no 401k, no sick time, no personal leave, no thank you. Who says we don't get that? I get paid vacation time. I get sick time. I have 401k. I save money for my retirement. Health insurance. It's a necessity. It's a all that is a business expense. It's just not handed to you. That there is the employee mindset. Oh, I don't have this, this, and this, so I'm not doing it. No, you do have this, this, and this. But you as a boss need to make sure you as an employee have that. Your responsibility is a boss. As a fleet manager, as an owner, 
It's your responsibility. If you can't put $100 a week, $200 a week to pay your bills while you're on vacation, you shouldn't be doing this. Are you disciplined? Do you have enough discipline to make $10,000 and not spend it? Cool. That's a big number. People are going to say, ah, you ain't never going to have 10 G. You will have 10000 And you have to look at it and not spend it. You have to save it. You've got to get 20 grand in the bank and not touch it. 30 grand, not touch it. Are you disciplined to only pay yourself what you're due? DM Trucking, or I'm sorry, David does not get DM Trucking's money. And yes, there is still DM Trucking. I still have my own business. I run a business. A business is different than an authority. If you're an owner-operator, if you're a subcontractor, if you're responsible for your expenses, you're responsible for getting your work done, and you answer to nobody, and you have a, a business. Miles, exit right. And I know what people are going to say. Oh, oh yeah, you, you answer to blah, blah, blah. What's going on here? Oh, you're leased on, so you do have a boss. You have this, you have that. Well, you don't know the extent of what goes on, you know? You just don't. And I get it. I understand. You know, not everybody understands what I have set up. Like, I really don't answer to nobody. Unless I really, really make a mistake. And you, as the owner, you still answer to somebody. Trash a car and watch what happens. Get caught going over your hours. Watch what happens. Do whatever you want when you want. Watch what happens. You've got to have right. that mindset. Do you know what I mean? You can't just be willy-nilly, oh, I'm in charge, I do what I want when I want. Are you disciplined enough to say, you know what? me doing that would be illegal me doing that would cost my family everything me not following my law book could cost me a week are you willing to stop are you willing to go by the rules and the regulations a lot of people won't some people don't I, I didn't mean a lot of people I'm sorry some people won't and some don't because they, oh, I'm the boss. I can do what I want. Yeah, you really can't there, buddy. But you can if you're willing to pay the consequences. I'm not willing to look at my wife and kids when I'm home because I've done wrecked my truck. I, I don't have whatever. And I'm going to tell you right now what somebody's thinking. Here he goes again, Mr. Negative Nancy, scared of competition, don't want nobody in the business. No, really what I don't want is you to make your wife, kids, and yourself suffer due to lack of, lack of uh, research, lack of information, ignorance to the business because you've listened to all the fluff. Oh, this is the best business. The best thing I've ever done in my life. I wish I could just wave a wand and everybody that is capable can jump on board. Right now, boom. You're on, you're running. We're all working together. We're all happy. We're all making money. <clears throat> Here's the reality of the situation. 80% fail. And a lot of stuff. You go to try to day trade stocks, 80% fail. Open up your own restaurant, 80% fail. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Pretty sure how that saying goes. That's statistic. 
So think about it. So am I really being negative and trying to chase you away? No. Trying to instill the fear of the unknown in you so that you get all your research done. So you're ready to go. And you're not thinking outside the box and putting too much into it. I mean, there's guys that run under CDL that got so much stuff in their truck, they've cost themselves two or three cars. This is just nonsense. Because they don't, like, not everybody understands. You know, there's people that come out here with a truck and trailer. They buy a truck, they buy a trailer, and then they can't get insurance. Or they buy a truck, they buy a trailer, they get insurance. And then they find out their rig is not under 26. They don't have a CDL. What do you do now? I was, oh, well, get a CDL. I wish I could get one overnight. It took me two months, three months in my state. Not every state just hands them out. So, you, are you organized? Are you organized? That was my biggest struggle and still is to this day. Organization, oh my God, that is my kryptonite. That, if anything puts me out of business, it will be lack of organization. I'm going to tell you right now. I am horrible. I'm getting better. Getting better one day at a time. But, it ain't there. It ain't like it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's got a downfall. Everybody's got a pitfall. Everybody's got something they got to work on. Do you know yours before you get started? I hope so. Because when it smacks you in the face and you don't know how to deal with it, like organization did with me. So, guys, when... This is just the first step, the first thought first idea before you even put it into plan put it into action now you've answered a couple questions now it's time to put pen to paper put brain to hand pen to paper but that's for the next video guys make sure your mindset's right make sure you can handle what you're about to do But can you handle if this truck breaks down right now and you're stuck on that shoulder with no heat for a night? Because you may have a choice to make. If you break down over there at 1030 at night and you call a wrecker and they tell you it's 1200 tonight or 800 in the morning. Can you sleep over there with no heat? Oh, absolutely not. I'm going to pay the money. That's fine. I wouldn't. You know, because that money could be used for something else. If creature comforts are super duper important to you, you might want to think about it. And when I say think about it, I mean think about getting a CDL and getting a big truck. You know, because in a big truck, you have a lot more options. In a big truck, you can have a generator, an APU on the back with a bunk heater and still your TV and all that. Well, I can only do so much of that. I only have so much room. And you've got to prioritize what you've got on your truck, going in your truck, what you need, and what's most important. I'm not willing to give up fuel or tools or... Uh, parts and stuff that I'm ready for I'm not willing to give that up just for a little bit of comfortability I'm just not willing you know it's just me though so guys make sure when you're thinking you're thinking correctly you got your right mindset going doing what you need to do 
you know, you can handle it. Talk to some people, ask some people. Put it out there. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you go right to Facebook for it all, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to hate truck drivers before you start trucking. It's the way it is on Facebook. It's getting like that on YouTube. You know, some of these guys, it just... I don't know this to be true, but it feels like they're out to set you up. They're out to make you fail and watch you suffer. And it's sickening, disgusting. But what are you going to do? You're going to listen to them because you don't know any better. So, that's that, guys. That's a little hood talk. Just my opinion on getting your mind right. Making sure you've got the right mind. Can you handle it? It's tough. Now here's the biggest, biggest, biggest thing you need. This is the hardest thing for some people. Most important thing for everybody. It causes some to fail. Patience under pressure. Wow, oh, there, there's no pressure out there. Let me tell you something. Yesterday at 12 o'clock, noon time, I had one car and didn't even know if I was going to make it. Stay calm. Whoopsa. Relax. Go with the flow and it will work itself out. I left Arkansas with one pick and four drops. That's fine. You know? Because of where I need to go, that's perfect. So, patience is key. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a necessity. Patience can put you out of business if they're non-existent. Alright guys, like, share, subscribe. Hit that ding! Ding. And we will see you tomorrow. Peace.